Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make your own sewing patterns for stuffed animal clothes so you can make clothes that fit your stuffed animal perfectly. The materials you'll need are some plain pieces of paper. I like to get ones that have already been used so I just grab these from the recycling bin. You'll need a pencil, a flexible measuring tape, and some scissors to cut them out. And of course you'll need the stuffed animal you're making these clothes for. And one more thing I forgot to mention is a ruler for drawing straight lines. Now the first pattern I'm going to show is how to make a simple t-shirt. You'll really just need three main pieces. You'll need the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, and the sleeves. The first thing I'm going to measure is around his stomach, and I'm just measuring this front part of his body, and I'm judging the halfway points to be right under the middle of his arms. So I'm starting right there and then wrapping it around to the other side. And for me that measurement was six inches. So now that first line we're going to draw is that measurement and I'm going to make sure to add an extra inch for seam allowance. So I'm making mine seven inches. So I'm just making a little mark here and there's no point in drawing a line since the bottom of the paper is just going to be that line. The next measurement I'm going to take is basically the length of the shirt. So I'm going to start putting my tape measure at his shoulder. Then I'm going to pull it down and look at how long I want the shirt to be. So I want mine to be at about four and a half inches. So I'm going to add an extra half inch for seam allowance and make it five inches. And the tape measure works fine for this. I don't know why I keep switching back to a ruler, but I'm just going to make a few marks at five inches. The next measurement I'm going to do is the bottom of the sleeves. So I'm going to measure right under his armpit and pull it down to where I originally wanted the shirt to end. And I wasn't too precise about this. I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted it to end, but I just made sure to add an extra half inch since that's what I did for the first measurement. I ended up going with three inches and now I'm just making some marks on the left and right side. Now I need to measure how far the neckline is going to go down. So I'm gonna place my tape measure at his shoulder again and just kind of see how deep I want the neckline to go. And for me, that was about one and a half inches. If you're adding a collar, you'll want to make this measurement larger since the collar will add a little extra bulk, but if you are just going to hem it, you'll want to make it shorter since you will be folding over the edge. So now I'm just going to around the middle of those guidelines we've already drawn, and then I'm just going to measure one and a half inches down from those lines we made at the top. The next thing I'm going to measure is how deep I want to draw the openings for his arms. So I'm going to place the tape measure the same place I did for the first measurement and measure the distance between his side and kind of where his shoulder begins and for me that was one inch in. So I'm going to measure one inch from the left and one inch from the right and to make sure this right measurement is correct I'm going to make sure to finish that line I first drew. And now I can measure one inch from the right. Now I'm going to connect that line I just drew with that horizontal line we drew earlier and you'll want to curve it down like this. Now the last measurement to take is how wide his shoulders are, and I usually do one inch for Build-A-Bears, but he's smaller than a Build-A-Bear, so I'm just gonna do three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna make a mark three quarters of an inch away from that curve we just drew on both sides. Now the last thing to do is just connect these lines in a deep curve, making sure the bottom of it meets that line we drew earlier. And now I'm just gonna finish off that top line, and this piece is done. If you're not planning on using Velcro for this shirt, you can just use the same piece for the front and the back. I would usually just make the neckline a little bit less deep for the back. But when adjusting this for the back piece when using Velcro, you'll want to add an extra half inch to an inch. Since the Velcro will overlap in the back, your piece will need to be a little bit longer. And you can add that extra to the sides, or when you cut this pattern in half, you can add the extra to the center of one of these sides. Now the only other piece we have to make is for the sleeves. I'm going to put this on the same paper, but you might need an extra one if your stuffed animal is bigger. And I'm first going to measure around my stuffed animal's arm, and you'll want to measure around pretty loosely, or at least as loose as you want the sleeves to be. And doing that, I get around five and a half inches, but I'm going to add an extra half inch for seam allowance. So on this side of my paper, I'm just going to make a mark at six inches. Now to measure how long the sleeves are going to be, I'm going to put my measuring tape right at where his shoulder begins and then just kind of pull it down his arm and just see how long I want the sleeve to be. I want this to be a short sleeve shirt, so I want it to end at about three and a half inches, but I'm gonna add an extra half inch for seam allowance. And now measuring right in the middle, I'm gonna make a mark four inches from the right. And lastly, I'm gonna measure the bottom of his arm, so right under his armpit to where I want the sleeve to end. So I'm just eyeballing where it will match up with that other measurement, and the measurement I got was two and a half inches, so I'm gonna make little horizontal marks there on each side. 
After that, we just need to connect all these markings we've made. So first, I'm just extending that marking at the top, and I know it's not quite straight, but that's okay. Now I'm going to sketch a little curve over that little mark we made in the middle. And now I'm just extending the sides and connecting these two in a curve. Mine didn't turn out very even at first, but I think that's just because that first mark I made was not in the center. But that's okay, because before cutting this out, I'm going to make sure to fold it in half so it is even on both sides. So that's what I'm doing here, just lining up the sides and folding in half. Now I'm going to redefine that curve before cutting it out, and when comparing that to the shirt piece, the curves won't match up exactly, but there really is supposed to be a little extra at the end, so that's normal. Now I'm just going to cut it out. And I ended up just flattening the top out a little because it was a little pointy. And after that, I'm just going to cut out my shirt piece. And I'm folding this in half again just to make sure the curves on both sides are even. And after that, your stuffed animal shirt patterns are done! If you want to know how to turn these patterns into an actual shirt, check out my basic t-shirt video. The next pattern I'm going to show you how to make is for pants. So the first measurement I'm going to take is around the entire waist. So I'm wrapping this tightly around his entire waist, and for me, I got 11 inches. Now if you're planning on using elastic for these pants, this will be the measurement for your elastic. I'm going to write it at the top of my paper here, even though you can't really see it, but just as a reminder what it is. And if you're not using elastic, I would recommend using a button or a zipper just to make sure the pants can stay on tightly. Now, if you are using an elastic, the next measurement we already have, which will be the entire length of his waist, and that will be the total length of our pants pattern. Even though we're going to be eventually sewing two of these pieces together, it needs to be double the length so the elastic is shorter than the amount of fabric, that way it will be able to stretch going on and off the stuffed animal. But I'm going to continue the elastic version later and just work on if you're not using an elastic. So instead of that first 11 inch measurement we just took, you'll just want to divide that by 2 and add an extra half inch for seam allowance. So I'm going to make two 6 inch markings around the bottom and the top. And then I'm going to connect them. From now on, the steps are the same for the elastic version and for the one without an elastic, except I'm going to show you how to measure and draw a curve like this for the one with the elastic. But when you're doing this version, you'll want to have this curve extended from the line you just drew. With the other one, I'm going to cut in, but with this one, it's just important to have it added on. And now I'm going to flip my paper over and really just focus on the elastic version, since this is the version I usually do. And the first measurement we needed for this we already took. The length of the pattern is just going to be his entire waist, which for me is 11 inches, but my paper is already 11 inches, so I'm not going to make any marks. So the next thing I'm going to measure is from the middle of his stomach down to his foot, and you're just going to want to see how far down you want the pants to go. For me, I wanted it to end at about 4.5 inches, so I'm going to add an extra full inch to this measurement, since the top will need to be folded over to fit this elastic, and so this one extra inch accounts for that. So that means my measurement is 5.5 inches, and now I'm going to measure 5.5 inches from the bottom. I accidentally marked it at 6 inches first, so I had to correct that later, but I'm making two of these markings so I can eventually connect them in a straight line later. So now I'm just going to connect them and we can take our next measurement. And I'm going to place my tape measure the same place I did for the last measurement and just kind of see how far his stomach goes down. And I got about 2 inches for that, but you'll want to add at least half an inch to an inch extra for seam allowance, so I think I went with 3 fourths of an inch. And this next measurement is kind of optional, but I'm just going to measure from the middle of his belly to between his legs, and that's going to be a curve. So I'm just curving my measuring tape and lining that up with that last mark we made and kind of connecting the curve from there. You don't actually have to measure this, you can just eyeball it if you want, but usually their fronts are a little flatter than their behinds, so for this second curve, I like to make it a lot deeper than the first one. So I did the same for the second one, except I made it a lot deeper. So after that, your pattern is done and you can cut it out. I know these don't look like pants at all, but I already have a few videos on how to make pants, so you can check those out if you want to see more. I really hope you found this video helpful, and you can probably tell by the length of this video why I don't show how to do this for every video, but leave a comment if you want to see more of these. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time.